per usual living on this channel is for educational purposes only and is not intended as financial advice. It's Tuesday, it means it's trading tip Tuesday. Now, before you click off the video, just hear me out. I'm going to talk about harmonics today. Not something many people rely on, trade on, not something I've seen people have success with, but occasionally, about less than 5% of the time, you'll see a harmonic that someone's talking about or something will pop up and you'll think to yourself, is that a harmonic? So having some baseline knowledge, at the very least, is going to help. Okay, and because I know no one's going to watch this video anyway, just, just give me a like, give me a dislike, subscribe, whatever. Okay, help me in the algo if you've never commented before. This video will need it. Okay, so throughout my decades, decade? Yeah, it's been a decade of trading. I've seen maybe one or two people use harmonics effectively. I will discuss, in my opinion, how I think they can be used effectively. I'm certainly not the world's foremost expert on harmonics, and I definitely don't use them often, but they are worth at least knowing about, okay? So keep in mind it's a buffet. When you go to the buffet, the trading TA buffet, you don't have to eat everything. You don't have to load up your plate, okay? You don't have to be a gluttonous hamburger grease dripping American and buy and uh, pick up everything on your plate, right? Some people like chart patterns, like me. Some people like trend metrics. Some people like the cloud, like me. Some people like pitchforks, okay? <laughs> it's a buffet. You don't have to pick, you don't have to eat everything. You don't have to use everything. But just knowing what's in the tuna salad or the lima bean soup or whatever it is may one day helpful, be helpful. You may be hungry for that lima bean soup one day. So I'm going to put some links in the description. Research on your own, right? And then you're going to have to apply this on your own because I think personally for me, for my brain, and I'm super visual, I think these are extremely hard to figure out and wrap your head around just as far as like how the heck do I use this thing effectively to actually make a trade, right? So there are... Known patterns, let's just say, similar to chart patterns, right? Where there's a chart pattern dictionary, let's say, and there's cheat sheets and you can go and look and use those. I'll put some of those in the description as well. We'll talk about those. And I think for me, the steps to identify these is to, when you open up a chart, ask yourself, where are we in the cycle? Are we in the process of potentially making a harmonic? Has the harmonic completed? Are we moving towards a potential target of a harmonic or has... A harmonic may be formed and failed, or are we somewhere in between those steps? I'll give examples of that. The first thing you always want to do, at least for me, the easiest way to identify a harmonic that's either in action or completed is always look for a double bottom or a double top. The next thing you want to do is draw it out. You can use the harmonic tool on TradingView to do this. And then after you map it out, depending on if we're you know in the process of the cycle, completed, whatever else, then you develop the trading plan once you've identified the possibilities, right? Entry, exits, stop loss. So like I said, I'll put the light reading research in the description of this video. The TLDR, harmonics refer to basically fib numbers, that's what we're trading around here, that form patterns that have names. Usually they're animals. This guy created it, okay? That's the TLDR. Bat, crab, shark, anti-bat, crab, shark, you know, inverse, whatever, whatever, whatever. There's geometry and there's all this theory behind it. Not too important for me. I could care less, honestly. But again, there's there's lots of maybe not great reading, but it'll get you started. It'll wet the beak. It'll get the interest going. There's also, I'm not going to talk about it in this video, the basic harmonics also count as harmonics that you'll probably hear more often than, you know, bullish bat or something, is A, B, C, D, or a three drives pattern. The idea being here is you identify these patterns as they're forming, and then you know where to take action once you potentially reach a target, right? And this is probably the best of the articles from Stock Charts. And this is where you want to get to. This is the place you want to get to. You want to say, okay, there's XYZ pattern here. Great. Drawing it out, fibbing it out, and then using fibs to form the trading plan. Using the pattern and the repetitive nature of the pattern to get some idea for entry and stop loss before it's done forming, right? And then after it's completed, you're you're laughing, you're on your way, right? But anytime you're looking up harmonics, you want to get to this because if you're watching somebody and they don't talk about this or they're just doing stuff on backtesting, it doesn't help, okay? Backtesting, you can make anything look great. You can highlight anything that looks great. 
show me how to do it as it's forming, as it's happening, right? And we'll get to examples. Before we get to some examples though, let me mention today's video sponsor, Kraken Pro. Kraken Pro is a complete overhaul of the Kraken trading experience with a one-stop shop for advanced and professional traders. Kraken Pro enables efficient trading execution across multiple markets with a UI that allows for unique optimization tailored to your trading style. You can check out Kraken Pro with a link in the description of this video. And they do in fact have the harmonic button, right? It's called X, A, B, C, D, but you'll see A, B, C, D. You'll see all this stuff you've maybe never used. I would personally include Elliott Wave type stuff in with harmonics. These are super subjective. You do have to have some background knowledge and we can draw pretty pictures all we want, but unless we're actually taking trades off of it and making money, for me, it's useless, right? So definitely practice, definitely do back testing, definitely try to identify this stuff. And then if it works for you, great. If it doesn't, great. But it really hasn't panned out super great for me historically, except for the extreme edge case niche situations where just knowing that they exist helps form a viewpoint. So we turn on the X, A, B, C, D pattern. The first thing I said to do is look for a double bottom or a double top. This isn't even a crypto pair. Technically, this is tether against the euro. And for me, right, I would say, oh, there's a triple top here. There's a triple bottom here. That's one way to use chart patterns, right? But let's just pretend we're going to use, we're going to force ourselves to use harmonics. Typically, you want to use some extreme higher, extreme low for the first portion. And then it's kind of up to you. Again, this is subjective. Where are we going to put the next point? Are we going to put the third point here? Okay, maybe maybe we'll go with this. Maybe we're going to Bob Ross it up like that. And I like to make this big for the, the mobile users because I know there's a lot of you crazy kooks that watch it on mobile. So you'll see these numbers and you'll think, how the heck did those even, what does that even mean, right? <laughs> and those numbers correspond to, right, this cheat sheet. And again, there's Crab, Butterfly, Gartley, blah, 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 whatever. It doesn't matter. It may help you uh, discuss and identify them. But to me, the most important numbers that I always look for are the bottom and the top. Okay. So we had our double bottom. Is the second point higher or lower than the first point? That'll help you identify, right? Is this a bearish bat? where the C point goes lower. Is this a bearish crab? No. Is it a bearish butterfly? No. Gartley? No. It's actually not even on this cheat sheet, right? So you have to sort of expand your horizon and go further out and say, oh, this is maybe a shark or a Nen star. You know, again, the, the names are whatever. It doesn't matter. But so we're back to the, the chart. Ideally, as this is forming, you are trying to find where, where's this D point going to be, right? Based on options of known repetitive chart pattern type style cheat sheet stuff. Uh, so the next thing you want to do, once you get your points just anywhere randomly, right? You're looking at the XA leg of this always when this is forming. And we're going to fib that out. Okay, now this will help us initially draw this. You might have to add this to your chart, 0 0.886. Okay, great. And it's going to be somewhere around there, roughly. And the other option was 1.272, I believe. So I control C, control V, the pattern, and then move it up, right? So this gives you kind of a timeline, kind of some idea of where this could go, what this might look like. Sometimes it does match, you know, this diagonal will match the actual price. Sometimes it doesn't. Again, these are super subjective. You have to be comfortable with what you're drawing to even know what the heck you're doing. But this gives us a rough outline in the moment as far as what this might be eventually play out as in the future, right? This is an example of something that's in the process of being being formed. Uh, now, we hope that the dollar isn't this strong, <laughs> but, but if this plays out, it can certainly be the case. And I'm sure there's, there's other harmonics that don't extend as far. Point is, there are a few you need to know, the super basic of, right? And I'll put all these in the description. And then there's some more exotic ones that may potentially apply. But again, you have to use this stuff to really get a handle on it. And then there's that like 5% of the time, occasionally when you'll see something that looks like this. And for me, I'm thinking, oh, I know this chart. I've seen this chart. I look at this chart every day. This looks like ETH BTC to me. And you might think I'm crazy. That's fine. But ETH BTC has a double top. It has double topped many times in the past. It hasn't completed its, its down leg yet, right? But we can use harmonics to try to map that out. So we'll get to that in a second. But just looking at it, right, 
there have been plenty of instances of double tops all over this. I like to zoom way out because there's this question of, you know, do I use Wix? Do I not use Wix? Subjective, you know, do whatever works for you. I would use the Wix personally, but currently, you know, we're in this double top formation, arguably. Is that the best fitting pattern? You know, is this a falling wedge? Is this just a vanilla double top? Is it something else? Is it a diamond top? I think there are many things that could fit this. And there are probably easier ways for this to be analyzed. But again, it's a buffet. Okay. We're, we're, at, we're eating our lima bean soup or whatever. The, the shrimp cocktail looks good today. We're going we're gonna to check out the shrimp cocktail. So here's an example of both back testing and forward testing, how this may look right? We could, we could draw, I think this would be a bullish bat or something. Again, the names are whatever, it doesn't matter, but you usually want to draw this using extremes in price, right? So in this case, four points that were extremes, and then you measure the X, A leg with the fibs, which I've done incorrectly here, but then that gives you potential levels, right? Similar to, to this example, the bullish Gartley. Now, as this is forming, as this is completed, you can use trailing stops, whatever, but you have some rough idea of where this may go. Didn't quite get to the first target, but it got close. Now, I would have rather used the inverted head and shoulders measurement from 2019 to 2020, but before that even formed, this gives you some idea of what's going on. Now, if we fast forward to current situation, the exact points you pick, subjective, up to you, you have to be comfortable with them, etc. But this is one example where this could be a crab, deep crab, shark, I don't know. I'm just looking at these levels here to give us some rough idea where this may go. Now, is this better than just measuring fibs from the high to the low and saying, okay, 1618 is probably where it's going to go? I don't necessarily think so, but again, it's up to you. I know I'm not doing a good job selling this stuff, but it's more about what you're comfortable with in your trading style. Let's go to Bitcoin. Current example. Okay. Now I didn't force some like 886 number. I didn't force whatever up here. You can use the Wix. You don't use the Wix. I don't care. Roughly, this is something. I don't, again, I don't know what animal this is. Uh, maybe it's a bullish butterfly. Something else you'll notice on these patterns, rising patterns have a bearish reversal. Falling patterns have a bullish reversal. There's no, there's no continuation pattern in this language that I've discovered. So if we go back to the BTC example. We form something, it's a something, right? It doesn't matter. <laughs> and we take the XA leg, we get target one, we get target two. Now, target one should sound familiar, 40 to 49, mainly because that's the, the edge to edge cloud move, right? To 42. The cloud's telling you it's 42 because of the 50% retracement from the high to the low. This gives you roundabout same target. As this was moving down, let's say in 2022, you would pick these three points first and then draw this to the 886 and then draw it to the 1.272 and see what happens, see what makes sense, right? And that's exactly what I did for ETHBTC. Here's another, you know, just zoomed in of that ETHBTC move. Same thing, right? It's either going to likely pause somewhere around 886 or the 272. If this pattern is real, it should reverse off of that point. And what you could do for your entry, your long entry, is you could say, well, somewhere in here, I'm going to start to buy, right? And then if it breaks this level, whatever fib is appropriate for you, then I'm, that's my stop loss. That's one way, one way to approach it, right? Let's take the DXY example again. Here's the 886. Here's the 1272. It's calling 113 to 118. Just ugliness, right? Rough idea. No promises. Not in a straight line, although it has been the past 11 weeks. This is just the ballpark, right? So you could say your short entry zone would be between 113 and 115. Your stop loss would be anything above 115. And then you try to reshort it at the 1272, somewhere 118 to 120, whatever, whatever you're comfortable with, right? Alternatively, you could say, you know what, I'm going to long this with the trailing stop loss until 113, right? Or 114. Now, do you need to know that this is some sort of harmonic in an animal? You don't. You could just use the fibs and say, okay, high, low, great, 886, fine. That's probably easier for most people. Let's take the euro as an example. I would be more comfortable calling this a head and shoulders and being done with it and never thinking twice about it and saying, yeah, this is probably the target somewhere between 101 and 103. The harmonics people, depending on how you want to draw this, maybe they're more comfortable with the 9.7 level. 9.7 to 9.5 is your long entry target. And then you can measure it from there using the XA leg where those fibs 
would be as far as the target is concerned. Now, both of these are bearish in the moment, right? They're both going, pointing down. But to me, the, the triple top head and shoulders is, is much more believable. Uh, let's take oil. Let's fully flesh that out, okay? So we picked a bunch of points here. Arbitrary, subjective. This is what looked good to me. And we're already around about the 886. So this could be just done here, and it did slow down here, right? Again, we're measuring the XA leg and fibbing that out. So one trade setup you could take here is this is your short entry zone from 90 to 94. I'm going to start shorting this. My stop loss is going to be 94, 10, whatever. And then I'm going to re try to reshort this between 101, 60, and 111. And you're basically using the fibs and that zone as a ladder for confidence in an entry as well as a stop loss, right? After this completes, right, let's say four weeks from now, we don't have a higher high. We could say, oh, okay, this was a blah 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 crab or bearish bat or bearish butterfly. All right, let's, I think it's a butterfly actually, right? Let's take a look. Uh, neither. It's neither of those. Again, I don't, it doesn't matter. Maybe, maybe it's a bat. Maybe it's not. Whatever. It's something. All I care about is the 886, the 1.272, and 1.618. So from here, my first target, assuming this is something, doesn't matter. It's one of these three, most likely, eventually. Target is between 71 and 76. That should say target one. Target two would be 47 to 57. And you're on an island. This is just TA. We don't have to think about how we get there. We could make up a narrative in our head and say, well, demand is actually really high right now. I think this is going higher. I think this is going to go at least to 100. Maybe it blows off 102 to 111. And how do we get sub 100? Well, global recession, you know. Just, you're trying to map out potential possibilities here. Maybe they're ridiculous, maybe they're not. But if I was trying to game out a theory as far as how this might happen for this specific product, that could, that's one possible, right? Because it's not like anybody's calling for sub $60 oil right now. That's definitely not the case, right? The case currently is very bullish oil. But anyway, lastly, let me just highlight another one. Again, play around with this. Identify some double tops, double bottoms. Have fun with it try to learn something, I would save these either in a folder or on a notepad, something to just give you some idea of like where this stuff could go in a couple weeks from now. I like the higher time frame stuff, but you can do this on any time frame. It doesn't really matter. Let's see if it worked, right? Let's see if it worked uh, six months from now. Does Matic go to whatever price this is? Uh, the scale's messed up, but whatever price this is, right? Does it go there? Does it go to the lower targets, which are extremely lower, right? You could do this with BNB, you could do this with anything. So look, this will, it'll be frustrating to try to figure out how to draw these, what these look like. I wouldn't get bogged down with some cheat sheet, okay? What I would focus on is the 886, the 1272, 1618. Those tend to be the real patterns that work out, okay? And they're not always gonna be perfect, they're not gonna be pretty, but give it a shot. That's all for this one. Like, dislike, comment, share, subscribe, Eat at the buffet and happy trading.